Hi, I'm Jan Newton from Newton Custom Interiors, and today I'm going to show you how to make pleated drapery panels. Here's our pair of drapery panels. So each one of these separate is called a panel, and a panel can be one with the fabric, or it can be two or three widths if you have a wider window. I have made our drapery panels a little bit wider than they need to be for this small window. But I did that so that I could show you how to seam fabrics together and how to figure your pleats and spaces if you have a seam in your fabric. So our panels are one and a half widths wide. We've got a full width of fabric. Let me find my seam. So we've got a full width of fabric. We have our seam. And then we have a half width of fabric. And I put the half width of fabric on the outside edge of each panel. So it's on the outside edge of this panel and then the outside edge of the other panel. These are our pleats. And then in between the pleats is the space. We also have at the end of the panel our return. And it's the fabric that goes from the back from the last pleat back to the wall. We also have, on the other edge of our panel, our overlap. And that's the fabric from the first plate to the leading edge of the drapery panel. Our panels are going to meet in the middle because we have a drapery pole and rings. They're not going to actually overlap, but we still call it the overlap. When I have a drapery pole and rings like this, I like to make my overlap about three inches. When you make your own drapery panels, you can make them to fit your windows. Because the panels are going to be made to fit your windows, there are some measurements and calculations that you're going to need to make to make the drapery panels. I am going to walk you through all of those measurements and calculations. I've included downloadable PDF forms that you can use to figure your finished width, your finished length, the fabric yardage that you're going to need for your drapery panel, and also how to figure the pleats and the spaces. The first step to making your drapery panels is to measure your window. I like to use a steel measuring tape to measure my windows. And after I've taken a measurement, then I write it down on a form. I've provided window measuring forms for you. The first measurement that you'll want to take is the width of the window. Next, you'll measure the length of the window and then the height from the ceiling to the top of the trim. You'll measure on either side of your window, on the left and the right side. And then you'll also want to measure from the top of the trim down to the floor. So first you want to get the measurements of the window, and then next we'll talk about the drapery hardware and how to measure for that. After you've measured your windows, then you'll need to decide what type of drapery hardware you want to hang your panels from. There's a couple of different options. In our example, I'm going to use a pole with rings to hang the drapery panels. If you notice, I've mounted the pole wider than the window. And I like to do that because it makes the window look bigger. And most of the panel will actually stack on the wall area instead of into the glass. If you're using a pole and rings for your drapery hardware, the first measurement that you'll need is the measurement from the, this part of the finial, not the outside of the finial, but where the pole starts to the other end of the pole right before the finial. I made this drapery panel shorter for this example, but most of the time I would make the length of my draperies go to the floor. So the other measurement that you'll need is your length measurement. Whether you go just below the window or you go to the floor, 
you're going to want to start right at the bottom of the ring and then go to the bottom of the window or a couple of inches lower or clear down to the floor to get your length measurement. Another measurement that you're going to need to get when you're measuring your drapery poles is the measurement for the return of the panel. And the return of the panel is the part that goes back to the wall. So I'm just going to take this off so I can show you how I got that measurement. Just measure from the ring back to the wall. And ours is about four inches. Another type of drapery hardware that you might use is called a traverse rod. It's very utilitarian. Um, it's not very pretty. So you would probably want to have a valance or a cornice to cover the rod. If you use a traverse rod, the um, measurements you're going to take and the figuring you're going to do is going to be a little bit different because we have these carriers that meet in the middle and they overlap. Whereas on our drapery pole, the rings will meet in the middle and they won't overlap. To measure a traverse rod, you're going to measure from the outside edge to the other outside edge to get your width. You're also going to need to measure what the return is. And then from the top of the pole of the Travis rod down to whatever length you want to make your panels. Once you've decided what type of drapery hardware you want to use, I would install the drapery hardware and then take your measurements. I've provided forms that you can use whether you're using a drapery pole and rings like ours or a traverse rod. There's two separate forms. You can plug your figures, your measurements into the forms to figure out what size your drapery panels will be. Once you've measured your windows, installed your drapery hardware, and have measured it, then you're going to use those figures to find your finished width and finished length for your drapery panels. Let's start with the finished width first, using a drapery pole and rings like we're, we're going to use. You will take the pole size, add in ease, and you want to add in some ease so that when you close the draperies, they're not too tight. I like to add in about an inch for every width or width and a half. So I added in two inches for ease. The returns, you want to add those also. And you want to make sure to add in both returns. So you would add each return from each side. You would take that figure that you come up with and divide it by two because you're going to have two panels and that will give you your finished width. So the example for our panels that I made for this video, the pole size measured at 50 inches. I added in ease of two inches. I added in both returns, so I added in eight inches and the total was 60 inches. I divided that by two because I'm going to have two panels in my pair and the finished width is going to be 30 inches. To find the finished length, if you're using a drapery pole and rings, is when your pole is installed and the rings are on it, you want to measure from the bottom of the a ring to where you want your draperies to fall and that is your finished length. In our example, I, I measured from the bottom of the ring to two inches below the window trim and that figure came up to 34 inches and that's my finished length. 
After you've measured your windows and your drapery hardware, and you've used the form to figure out how big your panels will be, you're going to take those figures and use them to figure the fabric yardages for your panels. Most drapery panels are figured at two and a half times fullness. If we wanted a 20 inch drapery panel, we would actually be using 50 inches of drapery fabric for it. So two and a half times fullness. If you're using a solid fabric, then you can use the uh, form that I've provided for figuring yardages when you have a solid fabric. You can also skip the next videos which show how to figure fabric yardages when you have a pattern fabric. If your fabric for your drapery panels is a pattern fabric instead of a solid fabric, you're going to need to figure your fabric yardages a little bit different. When you have a pattern fabric, you want the same pattern to go across the top of the draperies on each of your drapery panels. So if you have one window or three windows, you want the same pattern to be at the top of each panel. And this is also helpful if you are seaming with a fabric together. You want to cut on the pattern repeat for each cut so that you can match up your fabrics to make your seam. Let me show you on this extra piece of fabric that I have here. You'll see on this fabric that the diamond is probably about three inches away from the cut edge. But on our fabric, it's probably eight or nine inches from the cut edge. So what is going to happen is when I try to seam these two pieces of fabric together, matching the top edges, the pattern repeat is not going to match up. If I bring the fabric down, you can see where the pattern is actually going to match up on our seam. So in order to figure the yardages for your fabric that has a pattern, you need to first find out what the pattern repeat is. The pattern repeat is from one point on your fabric, and I'm going to pick this leaf right here, the top of the leaf, and I go down the fabric until I find that same leaf further down. That is our pattern repeat. So we're going to measure it, and it measures at 25 and one quarter. So I know when I go to my measuring form for figuring yardages when you have a pattern fabric that the number I'm going to have to plug in for the pattern repeat is 25 and a quarter. So next I'm going to show you how I put those figures into the measuring sheet and we'll figure the yardages that we need for this fabric. Next, I'm going to walk you through how to figure your fabric yardage if you have a pattern fabric instead of a solid fabric. There's some calculations that you're going to need to determine first before you can figure the yardage. You're going to need to know what your fabric cut length is. And to find that, you would take your finished length, add in your hem allowance. Mine is usually eight inches because I like to do a double four inch hem at the bottom of my drapery panels. You would add in the size of buckram, Mine is usually four inches, yours might be two inches, it might be six inches. And then you would also add in an extra two inches just so you have a little extra fabric. The total of that is your cut length. For our drapery panels, I know that the finished length is 34 inches and I add in the eight inch hem allowance. I add in four inches for the buckram and then the extra two inches. So my total cut length is going to be 48 inches. Next, you're going to need to determine your pattern repeat. As I showed you before, to find the pattern repeat and to measure it, you need to go from one part of the pattern to the same up part of the pattern further up the fabric. That measurement is your pattern repeat. So for our fabric, our pattern repeat is 25 and a quarter or 25.25 inches. Next, you're going to need to figure the number of cuts needed. And this figure will depend on how wide you want your panels to be. You would want to multiply the number of widths you need for your panels by two to make a pair of panels and that would give you the number of cuts needed. In our example, we want our panels to be one and a half widths 
we're going to multiply that by two to make a pair, and so we know we need three cuts of fabric. Next, to determine the fabric yardage, we're going to use these figures we came up with. First, we're going to take our cut length and divide it by the pattern repeat. And that's going to give us the number of pattern repeats we need to make our cuts. So in our example, our cut length was 48 inches, and we divide that by our pattern repeat of 25.25, or 25 and a quarter. That equals 1.9. Now you can't have a partial pattern repeat. You have to have whole pattern repeats. So you're going to need to round up the number of pattern repeats. In our example, we're rounding up 1.9 to 2 pattern repeats. Next, we would take the number of pattern repeats needed, multiply it by the repeat size, and that would give us our cut size. In our example, we needed two pattern repeats multiplied by 25.25, our repeat size. That gives us our cut size of 50 and a half, or 50.5. Next, we would take the number of cuts needed, multiply it by the cut size, divide that by 36 inches to get the yard, yardage of fabric needed. In our example, the number of cuts needed was 3. We multiply that by our cut size of 50 and a half inches, or 50.5, that equals 151.5. We divide that by 36 inches, and we come up with 4.2 yards of fabric needed. I would probably round that up to four and a quarter or four and a half yards of fabric. We're going to cut our three widths of fabric now. And I've got my fabric laid out on my table. And I wanted to show you how I get this top edge squared off so that I have a nice straight cut. What I like to do is just to make a little cut and take the, one of the strings and pull it so that it makes a little bit of a mark. And then I can cut on that mark a little ways and then I'll take the thread again and pull a little further on down and cut going all the way across the fabric. I've got the top of my fabric squared off and I'm ready to cut my widths of fabric for our drapery panels. One thing that I wanted to point out is that you always want to make sure you know which direction the pattern on your fabric is going if you do have a pattern fabric. Usually on the selvage you can see an arrow pointing up and so then you know the top of the fabric is in this direction. And this is important because you don't want to make your drapery panels uh, with the pattern upside down. And I also like to make sure that I pin at the top of each drapery panel in the upper right corner so that I know that my pattern is going this way and this is the top. So on each of my widths I'll be putting a pin in the top right corner. From our figures we came up with a cut of 50 and a half for our pattern repeat. So I just marked at 50 and a half on this side of the fabric and then on the other side and drew a line straight across. And then this is what I'll be cutting on to cut my first width of fabric. Then I'll go to the second width and do the same and then the third. Making sure again that I put a pin in the upper right hand corner of each of the cuts. We've got our three cuts of fabric cut and I have put a pin in the upper right hand corner of each of our cuts. On this third cut, because we need one and a half widths for each panel, we're going to cut this third cut in half. So I also marked the top of the middle of the panel so that after I cut it, I know that this is the top. If you have draper panels that are just one width, or if you have two widths or three widths, whole widths, then just disregard this step. This is only if you have a half a width in your panel. So on this third cut, I'm going to take the other edge and fold over. 
line up our selvages, get it straightened out, and then I'm going to iron the fabric real quick where the fold is, and then simply cut the width in half along that fold line. You don't have to iron the fold. I just think it helps a little bit, uh, makes it a little bit easier for me to find where to cut. Okay, so now we've got two full widths, and we've got one width that is cut in half. Now this is kind of a tricky part, so I want to make sure I go over it clearly. We want to put our half widths with our full width so that we can seam them together. But we want to make sure that the half widths go on the outside of each drapery panel. So this width that's folded over, I'm going to put on this side. I'm going to get this other cut out of the, our way for a minute. So this half width, and this is the top, you can see my pen is going to come on this side and get pinned so that our half width will be on the left side of the left panel. So this one is going to have to go on the other side of this whole width so that when I hold it up, this is the right panel and the half width is on the uh, outside of the panel. I'm going to pin this one also. In this next step, we're going to seam our fabric widths together. And I'm going to show you how to match up the pattern if you have a pattern fabric. If you only have one width of fabric in your drapery panels, then you can skip this step and go on to hemming the bottom of your drapery panels. If you have a solid fabric, you can skip the step where I talk about matching the pattern and just sew your seams together. So I've got my half width of fabric and my whole width, and I've ironed under part of the selvage in order for me to match it up to the other one width piece of fabric. So I'm going to bring the fabric over. To get our patterns matched up, I'm going to lay my half width that has the folded under selvage and lay it on the full width matching up the pattern. I'm going to put a pin in the fabric just to hold the fabrics in place as I'm matching. And I'm going to continue doing this all the way down the length of the fabric. Now that I've got my fabric pinned in place, I'm going to glue baste it so that it will stay in place when I take it over to the sewing machine. So just using some fabric glue, I'm just going to make a few dots and then put the fabric down where it needs to be to match up the pattern. And I'm going to put the pin back in. Then I'm going to continue on down the next section, doing more glue basting setting it down and putting the pin back in. And I'm going to continue going on down the panel with my glue basting. And then I'm going to iron it very lightly to help set the glue so it'll dry a little faster. Once your glue has set for a little bit, take the pins out and then flip your fabric over so that you can see ironed portion of your seam. We're going to pin the seam and then we're going to take the fabric over to the sewing machine and sew our seam. At the sewing machine we're going to stitch right where we've ironed you can see the crease. I'm going to sew right in that crease line to make our seam. making sure to stop when I get to a pin. And I'll continue on down the length of the fabric. You can see by glue basting and then sewing the seam, we've matched up the pattern for the seam pretty well. 
Ordinarily, when I sew two pieces of fabric together and make a seam, I like to open the seam up and then iron it open. But because I did the glue basting to help match the pattern, if I open the seam up now, I'm going to be ironing on the glue. So what I like to do when I glue baste a seam together is just fold the seam over both sides to one side of the panel and just iron it that way. Once I've got my seam in my fabric, it's at this point that I'm going to stop and figure my pleats and spaces. If you have one with the fabric, I have done a downloadable form where you can figure out your pleats and spaces for one with the fabric. If you have more than one with, like I do here, we need to figure our pleats and spaces a little bit differently because we have a seam. Let me show you on our drapery panel why it's so important to figure out where the pleats and spaces need to go when you have a seam in your fabric. As you can see on our panel, here is our seam right here. And it falls right at the back of this pleat. And that is a really good spot for it to fall. When the panel is open, you actually won't see the seam at all. You don't want the seam to fall on the front of the pleat because it'll be very obvious. So that's why we want to make sure when we figure our pleats and spaces that we get this figured right for the seam. When you're figuring your pleats and spaces for your drapery panels, there's some averages that you need to keep in mind. Usually a pleat size is five to six inches and its base size is usually on average three to four inches. You'll have five pleats in one width of fabric and in a half width of fabric you'll have two pleats. Next we need to measure the amount of fabric we have in our full width and in our half width. And before I measure our full width I am going to go ahead and cut off the selvage. You can leave it on if you want to but I'm going to go ahead and cut that off before I get my measurement. We're going to start by measuring the full width of fabric from the seam to the edge, and we've got 55 inches. Then I'm going to measure from the seam over to the edge of the half width, and we've got 27 inches. Now, I'm not going to cut anything off of this edge right now, but I probably will end up cutting off four to five inches. And the reason that I'm going to need to do that is when you have a half width and you only want two pleats, if you don't cut a little bit off the edge, the pleats are going to be much larger than the pleats on your full width. If we try and do three pleats instead of two, our pleats are going to be a lot smaller than on our full width. So in the next step, I'll show you how to figure the pleats and spaces when you have a seam. And I'll show you how I figure how much to cut off. Next, I'm going to show you how to figure your pleats and spaces when you have a seam or more than one seam in your drapery panel. You always want the seam to go at the junction of the pleat and the space. Normally, you would have five pleats for a whole width of fabric and two pleats for a half width. I like to draw out my drapery panel so that I can see exactly where my pleats and spaces, my overlaps and returns are. So I've drawn out the one and a half widths for my panel. This is the one width and then this one is the half width. When you do your drapery panels, you might have three widths. So you would want to draw out three whole widths. So you just need to draw out what you need for your drapery panel. If you just have one with the fabric, then you don't need to use this form. I've provided another form for figuring your pleats and spaces with one with the fabric. One thing you want to keep in mind is that there's always one less space than pleats. So I have five pleats in width A and I have two pleats in width B so I have seven pleats but I only have six spaces one two three four five six and you can see here that 
this pleat is right next to our seam, which is exactly what we want to help hide that seam in your drapery panel. The first thing you're going to do is figure the measurement of width A. I measured our drapery panel on the table and it measured 55 inches for width A. So I went from the seam to the outer edge of the fabric. I need to take three inches off of that measurement for my side hem. And so the measurement of width A is going to be 52 inches for our example. I'm also going to um, figure the measurement of width B. When I measured width B from the seam to the outer edge of the fabric, I measured 27.5. I need to take off 3 inches and then I come up with 24.5 inches. But if you remember, I said that I'm probably going to cut off 4 to 5 inches. If I don't, these two pleats are going to be very large. In fact, I figured it out, and if I don't cut off four and a half inches, these pleats are going to be eight inches, and these pleats are only six inches, or almost six inches. So I just picked a figure of four and a half. You'll have to kind of play with your figures to see what you want to cut off. So this 24.5, I need to subtract four and a half inches. And that's where I came up with this figure of 20 inches for measurement B down here. Before we figure our plates and spaces, we need, first we'll need to figure our space size. So I like to do that up in here and it's the finish width of of our panel minus the overlap minus the return and then that figure we divide by the number of spaces to get our space size. So we know we want a finish width of 30 inches. My overlap here is 3 inches and my return which is over here is 4 inches. That equals 23 inches and I'm going to divide that by 6 spaces. So each of my space sizes is going to be 3.83 or 3 and 7 eighths. Next I'm going to work just on this whole width with A. I'm going to take the space size that we just figured up here, 3.83, and multiply it by the number of spaces. We know in with A we have five spaces. That's going to give me the total inches needed from with A for the spaces, 19.15. And I'll use this figure later on down here. We're going to take the measurement of with A, 52 inches, that's what we came up with up here, minus our overlap, 3 inches, that equals the inches that we need have for pleats and spaces, 49 inches. We're going to, to subtract the inches needed for with A for the spaces, and that's that was this 19.15 inches. And when we subtract that, this is the inches left in with A for the pleats, 29.5. We divide that by the number of pleats in with A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that equals 5.9 inches or 5 and 7 eighths inches are, is our pleat size just for width A. So for width A, we have five pleats at five and seven eighths inches. We also have five spaces at three and seven eighths inches. Next, we're going to work just on width B. We're going to take our space size that we got over here, 3.83, and multiply it by the number of spaces in width B. We only have one space. So the inches we need from with B for spaces is 3.83. We're going to take the measurement of with B, 20 inches, and we got that by subtracting another four and a half inches off of this width. We're going to subtract the return of four inches, and that equals the inches that we need for pleats and spaces for width B, 16 inches. We're going to subtract the uh, inches needed for the spaces, which is 3.83. We got that figure right here. And that equals 12.17. That's the inches left from with B for the pleats that we can use for the pleats. 
we're going to divide the 12.17 by the number of pleats in V, two pleats, one, two, and that equals a pleat size for width B of 6.08. And I'm just going to round down to six inches. So we know we have two pleats in width B, and they're going to be six inches each. We have one space in width B, and it's going to be three and seven eighths, just like our other spaces. So that is how you figure your pleats and spaces when you have a seam that you want the edge of the pleat to be at the seam. Now that we've figured our pleats and spaces, I like to make a pattern that I can use on my drapery panels to figure the pleats and spaces. So I've made this pattern out of a piece of buckram but you could use cut up paper bags or scraps of wrapping paper. I've made the length of it 72 inches because that's the amount of fabric that we have to work with for our pleats and spaces. On this end, I've marked our overlap, which is three inches, and I've marked that this is width A. I marked out that our pleats on this full width ended up being five and five eighths inches. So I made a mark and then I made another mark for three and seven eighths for our spaces, five and five eighths for the pleat, three and seven eighths, all the way along this full width of the fabric. So we're going to end up with a pleat, five pleats, and then a space. And our, you can see where the seam is going to be, right where we want it at the back of a pleat. Now in this width B, which is our half width, I've marked the return, which is four inches, and then these pleats are six inches. They're just a little bit different than the other width, like we figured out, but our space is the same. The spaces are always going to be the same width, three and seven eighths, and then the last pleat, again, six inches. So now I can use this pattern really easily to mark the pleats and spaces for each of the drapery panels. Now we're going to put the bottom hem in our panel. I've got the bottom edge of the panel, the top is at the other side, and I'm going to fold up eight inches for my hem. I have a line that marks eight inches on my table, but if you don't, which you probably won't have a line like that, you can simply use a ruler and fold up to your eight inches and then go further down the fabric and fold up eight inches and continue on down the whole width of the panel. Once you've got it folded up the eight inches, then iron it in place. Now that I've got my eight inches of fabric ironed and folded up for our hem, next we're going to just place the edge of the fabric in our crease so that we end up with a double four and a half inch hem. I'm gonna fold that over all the way down the panel and then I'm going to iron that too. After we iron it, then we put our pins in, just to pin it in place. There are several different ways that you can secure your bottom hem. If you have a blind hemmer, which is a sewing machine that only hems, then you can use that to sew in the bottom hem. Some home machines have a hemming stitch that you could use. If you don't want to sew the hem at all, you can use a fusible bonding web, which you just place in between the folded hem and the fabric and iron in place. The other way that you can secure the bottom hem is to hand sew it. And that's what I'm going to show you today. For hand sewing, I like to use a hand quilting thread. It's a nice, heavy, strong thread. I've chosen a red color so that you can see it on the video. Normally, I would try to match the fabric and either use a white or a green thread. I like to use a long darning needle for my hand sewing. 
and I've cut off a piece of the thread, probably 30 to 35 inches. I'm going to thread my needle, and then in one end of the thread, I'm going to make a knot. I'm going to wind the thread around my finger, twist, and then pull it down to make my knot. I'm going to start by putting my needle in the back side of our folded hem so that our knot is hidden in the hem. I'm going to take a little bite of fabric on this front part of the panel, pull through, and then next I'm going to put my needle in this top fold and run it along and come out probably about a half inch down the panel. Pull through, take another little bite of fabric, and then go through the fold. Pull through. Now you can kind of see what I'm doing. Here's the little bites of fabric that I took on the front, and you just barely see how tiny my stitch is. And when the, when the thread matches the fabric, you won't be able to see that at all. So I'll take another little bite of fabric, put my needle through the fold, and bring it on through. One more time. And I'll continue doing this all the way down the drapery panel. I've come to the other side of the panel and I'm going to take a couple of more stitches and then I will show you how to knot off the end of, of your thread when you're at the end of the panel. So I'm going to take a little bit of fabric like I have been, but instead of pulling all the way through, I'm going to leave a loop. I'm going to put my needle through the loop and pull through. That's my first knot. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take another little bite of fabric, pull through, and leave a little loop, put my needle through it, and pull through again. To hide my thread, I'm going to go through the knot and I'm not going through the front of the fabric, I'm only going through this fold. I pull through, and then that will help hide the knot and the end of my thread. I'll clip that off, and then we're done hand hemming the panel. You'll also need to choose a lining for your drapery panels, and you've got a couple of different options. The first option is a regular lining. This is a cotton sateen lining, and the other option is a blackout lining. I really like using the blackout lining because it helps give you the true colors of the drapery fabric. When the sunlight shines through it, it does not fade out the fabric. I'm going to show you a quick little demonstration to show you what I mean. We're going to use the lamp as our sunlight. I'm going to hold this up here. So you can see on this side, we've got the blackout lining. And on this side, we have just the regular lining. And you can see how it fades out in the sunlight. So I would recommend a good quality drapery lining, either regular or blackout, whichever you prefer. And I've provided a form so that you can use the figures that you've come up with to figure out your drapery lining yardages. Next we're going to figure out how much lining we need for our drapery panels. How many yards of lining? First we're going to determine our lining cuts. By taking the finished length we add in the 4 inch hem allowance. Most of my lining hems are double 2 inch hems so I need to allow 4 inches. Then you add in the size of your buckram and then that total is your lining cut length. For our example our finished length is 34 inches. We're going to add in 4 inches inches for the hem and 4 inches for the buckram. The total is 42 inches 
for our cut length. Next, we're going to figure the number of cuts needed. And this will always be the same number of cuts that you figured for your fabric. So we know we need three cuts of lining because we figured we need three cuts of fabric. Next, to determine the lining yardage, you would take the number of cuts, multiply it by the cut length, and that total would be divided by 36 inches to give you the number of yards of lining that you need. In our example, our number of cuts is three, and we multiply that by our cut length of 42 inches, the total of that is 126 inches divided by 36 inches, and we get three and a half yards of lining that we're going to need for our drapery panels. After you've figured out the yardages that you need for your lining, then cut out your lining widths. I've cut my three widths of lining, the measurement that I needed, which was 42 inches. All three of the pieces of lining, I've marked again the top right corner, Corner. And then on the third width of lining, I've also put a pin for my half widths. So just like I did for the face fabric, I'll take this top width, fold it over, cut on the fold line, and then I'll place the widths on either side of my full widths of lining, just like I did for the face fabric. Once you have your linings cut and your seams pinned, then you need to um, sew the seams of the lining together. Now that we've got our widths of lining sewed together, we're going to put the bottom hem in. And we're going to do a double two inch hem on the lining. On the face fabric, we did a double four inch hem. We folded up eight and then four inches. On the lining, we're doing a double two inch hem. So we're going to fold up four inches. And again, if you've got lines on your table, that's great. If you don't, just use a ruler and measure four inches all the way down. Then we're going to iron that. And once we've got that ironed, we're going to fold the fabric in. So here's the four inches. I'm going to fold it in so that the top edge of the lining is right in that crease. And then that gives us our nice two inch hem. And I'm going to iron that. Once you have the hem ironed in, then simply pin the hem in place all the way down the length of the panel. I already talked to you about different hemming options when we did our face fabric hem. So you can use the same technique that you used for the face fabric bottom hem on the lining. Now we're going to start tabling our panels, meaning we're going to put our face fabric and our lining together and put in our side hems and mark our pleats. So the first step is I've got my fabric panel laid out. I've got the wrong side up, the right side down, and I've got the hem away from me. I've got the top of the panel close to me. And I'm going to fold the fabric down to where I need it to get our finished length. And our finished length is going to be 34 inches. So I'm going to make sure I get it right on this side. And then I'm going to come down to the other side of the table and measure to make sure I get my 34 inches. Once you've got your fabric folded over at your finished length, then you're going to iron in that fold all the way across the panel as far as you can reach over. Part of our panel, because we have a width and a half, part of our panel is going to hang off the table. But we'll shift everything over later so that we can finish tabling that part of the panel too. Now we're going to 
put our buckram in the top of the drapery panel. And this is kind of a stiff paper, this buckram. And I've got four inch buckram that I'm using here. If you can't find four inch buckram, you may be able to find a bigger sheet of buckram that you're going to have to cut down into four inch strips. But that, that'll work too. You want your buckram size, the width of it, to be the finished width before the pleating. And we know from our figures from before that was 72 inches. So our panel laying here is actually wider than 72 inches because we're going to put our side hems in. So we're going to put the buckram in three inches away from the edge of the fabric so that it's not in the side hem. So I'm going to lift up the fabric and then put the buckram in trying to make sure that I get it close to that three inch mark and that it's smooth all the way across. Fold your fabric back over and you can kind of tap your buckram to make sure it's clear up in that fold. Once I've got the buckram in to the top of the panel, I'm just going to give it a quick iron to smooth it out. And then I'm going to or cut off the excess fabric right at where the bottom of that four inch buckram is. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to show, but it'll just get a little of that excess fabric out of there. And what I'm going to do, just because it makes it a little bit easier later, I'm going to continue cutting down this half width of the fabric, even though it's not on the table right now. But I know I need to cut off about four or five inches. But it'll be easier to do it now than later. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just need to get some of the excess out. Next, we're going to lay our lining on top of our face fabric. I'm going to put the wrong side of the lining down on the fabric, and I'm going to try to match up the seam of the lining with the seam on the fabric. The other thing that you need to keep in mind when you put the lining on top of the fabric is that we want the lining to be about one inch shorter than the bottom of the hem. So one inch away from the bottom of the hem of the face fabric is where we start the lining fabric. And again, I want to make sure that I've got this seam lined up. And I'll spread it across. And our lining is not quite as wide as our face fabric, but that's not going to be a problem either. We still have plenty to fold in for our side hems. Next, I'm going to iron it. Give it a quick iron. I have some excess fab lining at the top here, and I'm going to cut off so that I end up with just two inches of lining above our face fabric. And I can kind of feel where that where the face fabric is. And it, again, it does not have to be perfect. It's just kind of an approximate cut. But this will make it easier to fold down a shorter amount when we attach our lining to the face fabric. And again, I'm going to just, because it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just going to get this excess cut off right here. Once we've got that cut off, I'm going to fold under the lining. And I'll fold it all the way across the table. And I, what I want to have is about a quarter of an inch of the face fabric showing. Once I've got that folded the way I like it, I'm going to grab my iron and I'm going to iron that down. Iron that fold flat. Next, we're going to fold the lining back. And I'm going to glue, put a bead of glue along this folded edge of the lining. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. 
this is kind of a just a glue base to keep the lining in place and then later when we sew in the pleats that's going to really connect the lining with the base fabric but until we can get it to that point this just helps us connect them after i've got it glued i'm going to do a quick iron to help set the glue a little bit now that we've got our buckram in, our panel, and our lining um, attached to the face fabric, we're going to do our side hem. And we're going to do a double one and a half inch side hem, meaning we're gonna fold up three inches. And again, if you don't have the lines on the table, we're gonna fold up three inches all the way down the panel. Iron that. And then we're going to fold in so that we get our one and a half width, or one and a half, one and a half inch side seam. And then iron that in place. We're going to pin it to hold it. Down here at the bottom where we have our hem, it's a good idea to put a drapery weight in the side hem. It gives a little weight to the drapery and helps it to hang a little nicer. So we just put this in the fold. In fact, I'm gonna go clear over to the second fold so it's really in there well. Just like with when you did the bottom hems in the lining and the face fabric, whatever method you prefer to use to do the hem, do the same for the side hem. Whether it's hand stitching, blind hemmer, or even doing a hemming stitch on your machine. Our next step is to mark our pleats on the top of the drapery panel. We're gonna use the pattern that we made before and I'm going to lay it down this way for this panel because on this panel my width, my full width is on the table first. So my overlap is on this side. The other panel that I make is going to be a mirror image. So I needed to make the return first because the half width was laying here. Our drapery panels are mirror images with the half widths on the outer side of each panel. So we're gonna lay this down, matching up our seam and the edge of our panel. And I'm going to use just a regular fabric marker. You don't wanna use a fabric marker that is a disappearing marker because <laughs> your marks may disappear before you actually get your pleats sewn in. So I like to use a regular fabric marker. I'm going to start at this end, I'm going to mark at each mark that I marked on the pattern. all the way down until we get to the seam. We don't need our pattern anymore for a moment. Wherever I had a pleat, and I should have shown you this, wherever there was a pleat, I made a P, and then I made an S where it was a space. So now, I know these bigger spaces are my pleats, so I'm gonna put a pin in the middle of each pleat to kind of hold the, lining and the um, buckram and fabric together until I get it over to the sewing machine. So I'm going to pin, like I said, in, in the center of each of the pleats. Okay. So our width is almost done, this width that's on the table. But before I pull it over, there's a couple of things I want to do. The first thing is where I have the two seams laying on top of each other, the lining seam and the fabric seam, I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in 
connecting the two, the lining and the fabric, so that it doesn't shift when I pull the fabric and lining over the table to get to the rest of the drapery panel. The other thing that I like to do with this pattern piece is to lay it on the bottom by the hem of the panel. And when it's down here, I mark with a pen where the center of each space is. So wherever I have an S, I'm going to put a pin all the way down the panel, the part of the panel that's on the table right now. This is going to help keep our lining and fabric together. And then it's also going to help us when we fan fold our drapery panel later these pins are going to be at the back of each of the spaces and it's going to make it easier to do our folding. Now we've got this whole part of this panel tabled and we're going to pull over the panel until the other side is on the table. We're going to kind of straighten it out, try and keep everything square and straight and get things smoothed out. Once we've got our panel moved over on the table, I'm going to cut off my four and a half inches off of this half width that I figured we needed to cut off when I did our form for how to figure our pleats and spaces. I'm actually going to go ahead and cut the fa face fabric and the lining all together and just make a few marks at four and a half inches and then I'll cut that off. All the way down the panel. And now I'm going to flip the lining out of the way and work with the face fabric for a minute. I'm gonna take my measuring tape again and make sure that I have this folded at the top at our 34 inch finish length mark. Once I've got that measured, I'm going to iron. We've got our buckram in there. Make sure it's clear up at the top of that fold. And I'm gonna iron this down. Then I'll fold our lining back over. and iron it down. We're gonna pull back the lining again at the top and just run our glue, line of glue, along that top edge again. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll fold it back over and iron it in place. Next, we're going to fold in this second side hem. Again, doing the double one and a half inch hem. So I'm going to fold up at three inches all the way down the panel and then iron it. Once we've got that ironed, I'm going to fold in to make our one and a half inch side panel. I'm going to put a drapery weight again in this bottom part of our side hem in that fold. Fold it all under and then pin the side hem. Now you would go ahead and whatever method that you prefer, sew your side hems. Next, we're going to lay our pattern back out onto our panel at the top so that we can mark the two pleats that are on this half width. So using the fabric marker again, just gonna mark the pleats. And then I'll put a pin in the center of each pleat. Next, I put our pattern piece back at the bottom of our panel. 
and that there's only one more space left to mark so I'm going to put a pin in there where that space will be. Now that our panel is completely tabled, we've got our top buckram in, we've got our side seams in, we've got our pleats and spaces marked. We're going to take the panel over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew in all, the, all of the pleats. Okay, so now we're at the sewing machine getting ready to sew the pleats in our drapery panel. This is the top of our panel with our buckram and you can see where we've marked our pleats and we've got our pins in the center. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold the fabric so that these two marks match up. We're going to take the pin out and then I like to use a small ruler in here to try and make sure my lining and fabric are all in place inside this pleat. Then I'm going to take it to the machine, make sure it's where I want it. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. So our line is lined up with where my needle is. And I'm going to back stitch, reverse, and then go forward. And I'm going to sew down to where the end of my buckram is, right down here, about four inches. And then I'm going to reverse again to lock that stitch in place. I'm going to lift my needle up, and I'm not going to cut my threads. I'm just going to go ahead to the next pleat. And I know this is the center of it because that's where we put our pins. Let me get it straightened out here. Here's our next two marks. So I'm going to match those up and take my pin out again and then I'm going to use my ruler to make sure that everything is laying flat and smooth inside the pleat and then get the pleat lined up again where I want it. I'm going to reverse stitch and then again sew to where the bottom of the buckram is. Now I'm going to continue sewing the rest of our pleats in this panel. Before we get to putting the pleats into our panel, I wanted to show you some different pleating styles that you can use for your panel. This first one is a three-fold pinch pleat. There's three, the three folds, and then I've hand tacked it right under the buckram in the front. The second pleat is a two-fold pinch pleat. So just like the name suggests, there are only two folds. And again, it's tacked right under the four-inch buckram. This is a goblet pleat, and it looks kind of like a goblet glass. That's why it's named that. I've tacked it at the bottom, but instead of folding the top, I've left it round. And then I, it's a good idea to put something in the top of the goblet to help keep the shape. You can use a small piece of foam or batting. This is a small piece of inner lining flannel that I had laying around that I put in there. This next pleat is called an inverted pleat. So instead of sewing our pleat out, so that we have a fold out on the face side, you actually sew an inverted pleat so that the lining is out instead of the face fabric. And then I have tacked at the top on either side to keep this these edges down. This is popping up right now, but once you put a drapery hook in here through all the layers, that will hold the center part together. But it's kind of a nice tailored look, just a little bit different look for a drapery panel. These next two pleats, I used a two inch buckram instead of a four inch. This first pleat is called a Euro pleat, and it's folded in three folds like our pinch pleat was, but instead of being tacked at the bottom, it's tacked at the top. And then the last pleat we have is called a butterfly pleat. Again, I've used the two inch buckram here and folded it twice. 
and then tacked it right under the two inch buckram. And you just kind of let the, the pleat fold op or fan open so that it looks like a butterfly. These are six pleats that you could use, but there are many more. These are just the most popular ones that I've used. Now that we've got our pleats sewn, we're going to clip our threads. Didn't stop and clip each thread as I was sewing the pleat because it's actually faster to clip them all at the same time. And now I'm going to show you how I fold the pleat to make our three fold pinch pleat. So we make sure we've got a fold at the top and then I hold it with two hands with my fingers and press down so that this top part is in the center between the other two folds. And then I lift one fold up and then the other fold. And I really like to crease that. I'll show you again on this one. So I like to flatten it down first, hold on to the top pleat or the top fold, press down to the center, and then come up on each side with the other two folds and really crease that. Once you've got all, all of your pleats folded, I'm going to show you how I hand sew right below the buckram, tack the pleat together. You can sew on a sewing machine the pleat right in here under the buckram. But if you've got a home sewing machine, it may be hard for you to sew through all of the layers. And I personally, I really like the way the hand tack looks on the front of the pleat. So that's what we're going to do on these. Again, I'm going to use a hand quilting thread. I'm going to use the white to match the white in the fabric. I'm using a long darning needle again, and I've double threaded it. I'm going to use two threads. So I've got both threads knotted together at the end. First, we're going to start inside one of the first pleats. On the inside, not on the outside, on the inside so that our knot is hidden. And I'm starting about a quarter of an inch away from this top fold. I'm going to pull that on through. You can see where my knot is, but once I fold everything back together, the knot is going to be hidden. Now I bring the thread over the front of the three folds and I come over to the second side about a, a quarter of an inch away from the fold again. And this time I need to go through all three layers of fabric. and pull as tight as you can get that. I'm going to come over another second time. Go through all three layers. And one more time. Through all three layers. Pulling tight. Now on this side, I'm going to bring my thread back over and I'm going to start the process of making my knot. First, I'm going to take a little bite of fabric and then I'm going to take another bite of fabric. Pull my thread so that I've got a little loop left and put my needle through the loop and pull that tight. So that's one knot and I'm going to make one more knot. I'm going to take another little bite of fabric, pull through so that I've got a little loop left, put my needle through it and pull tight. Now to kind of hide this knot and this tail that I'm going to get after I cut the thread off, I'm going to put my needle through the knot and then I'm going to come up to the inside of one of these folds. It doesn't really matter where, but I'm going to pull that through and then I will cut the extra thread off. That tail is, is hidden and our, even our knot looks pretty good. And I'm going to continue folding my pleats and sewing the rest of my pleats together at the bottom of the buckram. I've got all of my pleats sewn now 
And I wanted to show you where the seam ended up right next to the pleat, which is where we wanted it and why we spent so much time figuring our pleats and spaces. You can see the seam is right along here, and then the seam from my pleat is right next to it. So when the pleat is laying face up, you really can't see the seam at all. Now we're going to put our pins in the back side of our drapery panel. We're going to start, this is actually the overlap, the three inch piece that we put on the leading edge of our drapery panel. And we want the top of the drapery pin to end up about a quarter of an inch down from the top of the drapery. So I know to do that, I need to come down about five eighths of an inch for my pins. That's about what I need to get the top of the pin at a quarter of an inch. So I make a little mark with a fabric marker, five, one and five eighths inch down, and then I put my pin in. And it's got to go through the buckram and everything, so it can be a little hard slide in. Once I get it started, I like to use my ruler and just bring it on up. So there you can see it ended up about a quarter of an inch from the top of the drapery panel. After we get our overlap done, we're going to start putting pins in each of our pleats right here where the seam is. So again, I'm going to measure down one and five eighths, make a little mark. And this time I'm using a fabric marker that does disappear because I'm going to put my pins in right away. So you stick the pin in right at the mark, right in that seam. And then pull it on through. And in the seam, it's easier to pull up and you don't usually need to use the ruler. So let's do one more. We're gonna mark down one and five eighths and then we're gonna put our pin in. I'm going to continue putting the pins all along the drapery panel. And then here at the end, where we have our return, I'll put a drapery pin in there too. Our next step is to fan fold our drapery panels before we hang them on the pole. This is an easier job if you can have two people one at the head of the drapery panel and one at the hem to help do the fan folding. To start our fan folding, first we're going to need to find where the center of this first pleat is. And I know my pleat is about six inches. So if I divide that by two, three inches should be about where the center of the pleat is. I wanna add that to my return size. On this panel, this first pleat is next to the return, which is four inches. When we do the other panel, you'll have the overlap here, and that's going to be three inches. So it'll be a little bit different figure for the other panel. So with our three inches plus our four, our seven inches, I'm going to measure at the bottom of the panel from the side hem to where seven inches is. My helper is going to hold the pleat at the top of the panel and we're gonna kind of pop that pleat up. Then we're gonna fold the return under and lay the pleat down flat. Next, we're going to find the middle of the next pleat and I know it's between these two pins that I marked for my spaces. So I'm gonna pop that up, we're gonna bring that over making sure that everything is kind of laying nice and flat inside the panel. Then we go to our third pleat. We're gonna pop it up, fold it over, and then the next pleat, fold it over, making sure everything is nice and smooth. Pop that pleat up. And then our final pleat. Okay. Now you can see, and I'm gonna fix this just a little bit, but you can see where all of our pins are, where we marked those spaces. 
So that's one reason I do that. It makes it a lot easier to do my fan folding and, and I make sure that those spaces, the back of the spaces are all to the back when we fan fold. Our next step is to take the drapery panel to our drapery pole and hang it up. So I've got my drapery panel pinned, hooked into the rings, and then I'm going to hook this last one. Here's a drapery pin. It's going to go right into the eyelet of the ring. And then this last drapery pin is on our return, and we're going to hook it onto the screw eye that I've screwed into the wall. So that will help keep our return nice and neat back to the wall. Now that we have our drapery panel hung up, we're going to dress the panel so that it's laying nicely. The first thing we're going to do is we want to make sure each of these spaces are pushed back. You can see how this one is forward. We're going to make sure they all go towards the back and that all the pleats are in the front. Our next step is we need to remove all of the pins that we put in the drapery panel while we were tabling it. They have helped us keep all the layers together. And now that we've got the panel hung up, we can take those out. So I've got a couple of pins in the seam that I'm gonna take out. And then I've also got a pin at the back of each of my spaces that I'm going to remove. You don't want to leave the pins in, especially if you have little ones. I would hate for them to get hurt by the pins. Okay, so that's all of our pins. And our panels are hanging pretty nicely. If you um, feel like your panels are not hanging very nicely yet, you can take some strips of fabric, either selvages or just regular strips of fabric, and you can just loosely tie the fabric around the panel to kind of hold the, the folds in place. And then I would put another one up here. If you had a long panel, panel that went to the floor, you might actually put another piece of fabric down at the bottom too by the floor. I would leave the strips of fabric on for about 24 hours to let the panel kind of train and to keep the folds in nicely. Now we've come to the end of our fabricating drapery panels tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and good luck with your drapery projects.